Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi stepped away from the lava banks of Mustafar, watching the last remnants of his former apprentice Anakin Skywalker burning into ashes. Unable to bring himself to deal the killing blow, the Jedi Master returned to Padme's ship, then brought the pregnant senator to the medical facility on the asteroid colony of Polis Massa. To the surprise of those who had escaped the Emperor's grasp, Padme was dying and losing the will to live, but she is able to deliver twins in Luke and Leia's Skywalker. Along with Bail Organa and Yoda, Obi-Wan decides to separate the new twins, for their safety away from the might of the new Galactic Empire, with Leia going to Alderaan under the watchful eye of the Organa family, and Luke to the last home on Tatooine. On the other hand, the new Sith apprentice Darth Vader was lied to by his master Darth Sidious into believing he had killed Padme. But what if Luke and Leia were born prematurely? How would the Jedi Council find out? Would Anakin be expelled from the Jedi Order and into the arms of Palpatine's plans? As you'll come to realise, their early births could have shifted the history of the Republic. Anakin entered the Republic base on the planet of Anaxis, where the Jedi Knight was about to depart for their mission to rescue the lost Dark Trooper Echo, keen to uncover the tactical advantages that the Separatists had been having in recent battles. With the time spent on the battlefield, Anakin had very little time to spend with his equally busy wife Senator Amidal of Naboo, and he asked his loyal clone Captain Rex to provide a distraction for him to talk to Padme. The Jedi discreetly walked into the clone barracks, with Rex on guard duty, and placed a hollow projector on the floor. The figure of his wife appeared, and from across the galaxy, Anakin could sense she was nervous, and Padme revealed that she was pregnant. The Jedi Knight beamed in delight, but the strain of the secrecy that they had kept throughout the war severely concerned Anakin and Padme. Hearing the warning from Rex, Anakin is forced to leave and completed his mission to free Echo. But upon his return to Fort Anaxis, Anakin is escorted to the Hollow Table, receiving a transmission from Padme again. The Senator was already at one of Coruscant's medical centers as the birth of the new twins was imminent. Anakin is unsure what to do and the matters are not helped by the entrance of Master Windu, and Rex quickly changes the hologram to a battlefield. The Jedi Knight decided to proceed with the mission first, utilising Echo to defeat Admiral Trench, and help to deactivate the bombs that had been set up. Instead of flying back to the Republic base, Anakin flies back to Coruscant, and finds Padme surrounded by C-3PO, R2-D2 and a group of medical droids. Holding Luke and Leia, Anakin was now worried about the safety of the children, and without the deaths of Dooku and Grievous, they would be in danger. Suddenly, the Master of the Order Mace Windu entered their room, and the Jedi and Senator had been caught. Windu had followed Anakin from Force and Axis, and his suspicions were confirmed to be correct, as the Jedi should have never been trained, as he had too much fear and too many attachments. As Windu left the room in silence, Anakin was determined to not let anything stand in the way of Padme and his new children. In the Jedi Council chamber, the mood between the members was filled with tension and disbelief, with some outraged at Anakin's actions for defying the Jedi Code, and others interested in the Force potential of Anakin's new children. Obi-Wan was the exception, as he had been aware of the situation between Anakin and Senator Amidala, and he was unsure of where he should stand. The Jedi Master considered his approach to the trial regarding the bombing of the Jedi Temple, and his relative silence had not helped Anakin or his apprentice Ahsoka Tano. Obi-Wan spoke on behalf of Anakin, stating that the Council should wait until the end of the war to discuss such matters, and Windu is wary of Obi-Wan's own attachment to Anakin. Yoda stamped his cane on the floor, and the Council vote upon Obi-Wan's motion, much to the disgust of Windu. The vote is passed to delay the judgement of Anakin, and Obi-Wan quickly leaves for Padme's apartment in the Senate apartment complex. There the Jedi Master is about to scold his Padawan, but he sees Anakin is glowing with delight at his new children. Obi-Wan chooses to reveal his presence, and reveals that he had managed to stall Anakin's trial. The Jedi is grateful for his master's efforts, but regardless of their decision, he would remain alongside Luke, Leia and Padme. In the Galactic City Senate office building, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine had sensed a shift in the Force. The years of careful manipulation of the powerful Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker were in pieces as he sensed his presence was full of light, and he needed to keep Dooku for longer than he expected. As he turned to the window and watched Coruscant's skyline, the Sith Lord needed to lay a perfect deception if he wanted Anakin to be his future apprentice. Palpatine turned from watching the speeders outside of the window to the hollow projector on top of his desk. Summoning the bounty hunter Cad Bane from the Republic prison cell, 
Palpatine tasked the Duros Jedi killer with keeping a close watch on Anakin Skywalker, and it was the perfect role for him. Freed by two of Palpatine's personal guards, Bane met the secret Sith Lord in his office, and together they reviewed the schematics of all of Coruscant's buildings, and saw that they were tightly guarded. Using several techno service droids, they spread them across the galactic city, searching for any clues to report back to their owners. In one of those buildings was Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala. The time Anakin could spend with Luke and Leia was considerably too short for the Jedi Knight, as he is quickly summoned to the Council meeting. With the decision on Anakin's status in the Order delayed, there is no one assigned to protect the children other than Padme's Naboo security forces, and Anakin is on edge. Nonetheless, Padme assures him that no harm will arrive to them, and Anakin heads off to the temple to receive details of his next mission. Anakin's master Obi-Wan Kenobi had been fending off the Separatist forces on the Outer Rim territory of Yabana, but Anakin needed to help and set off with his 501st Legion. On the way, he had a bad feeling about leaving Coruscant, but dispelled these thoughts to proceed to save his master again. As Anakin tackled the droid army in front of him, he suddenly felt a great wave of pain in his head and collapsed to the floor. Captain Rex rushed over whilst he was covered by several clone troopers and carried his commander to their base. Anakin awoke on the way to the medical bay and scrambled to the closest holo projector, shouting to reach Padme, but instead on the other end was his friend Palpatine. Anakin was relieved to see him and the Supreme Chancellor reports of an infiltration of the Senate Department complex, blaming Dooku and a Separatist bounty hunter. Anakin's thoughts immediately turned to Padme and his children, as this aligned with the vision he had just had, and ordered Rex to go and help his master, whilst he took his starfighter and headed for Coruscant. The Jedi Knight battered away the incoming transmissions from the Jedi Council, and flew to Padme's veranda, where a team of investigators was on the scene. Anakin's worst fears had been confirmed, as Padme, Luke and Leia were missing, but before he could leap into action to pursue the assailant, Mace Windu entered yet again and ordered Anakin to go back to help Obi-Wan before he was captured or killed. Anakin stomped out aggressively, but rather than follow the instructions of the Master of the Order, he headed off to Palpatine's office instead. There the Dark Lord of the Sith continues his path to the sea, blaming Dooku and that Anakin's wife was now aboard a Separatist cruiser. Anakin thanked the Supreme Chancellor for the vital piece of information and left for the skies, the result of Anakin's reckless abandonment now resulted in the capture of Obi-Wan's entire legion, as well as the Jedi Master himself, and the Jedi Council had to mount another mission for a rescue. They decided to dispatch Grand Master Yoda himself, alongside a group of ARC troopers who had remained at the military base on Coruscant, and searched for the last signal from Ibana's surface. Back aboard Anakin's ship, the Jedi Knight was fueled by his hate for Dooku, and desire to rescue Padme and their children and found that the coordinates given to him by Palpatine had been correct as he was under the heavy fire of Separatist tri-fighters. Despite the onslaught, a sleek looking ship that Anakin knew to be Dooku's slipped away but did not escape the attention of Anakin. As he swooped down to chase Dooku, he realised that they were descending to his old planet of Tatooine. Anakin knew that Dooku wanted to make him relive the suffering he had endured, but he would not let anything distract him. As he touched down on an opposing dune to Dooku, the Sith Apprentice moved in his usual calm manner towards Anakin, and the Jedi rushed towards the ship Dooku had arrived in. The Count of Sereno cackled to himself as Anakin searched every crevice of his ship, but found nothing. Turning to Dooku, he was soon stunned by a magna guard hidden behind the ship, and the trap set up by the Sith had worked to perfection. As he woke up, he found himself in oddly familiar surroundings, and he quickly discovered why, as he is met face to face by the weak weight pirate Hondo, who Dooku had paid a reasonable price to keep Anakin hostage. The Jedi gritted his teeth as he watched the pirates laughing and drinking through their tankards, and he was going to escape for Padme and his children. Anakin had little time to waste with these crafty pirates, but as he tried to formulate an escape plan, he heard the overwhelming sound of Republic Lords due to soul transports, as well as their Separatist counterparts. The guards stationed outside Anakin's cell ventured to investigate, and they left Anakin's lightsaber by mistake. Lifting it into the air with the Force, Anakin cut off the mechanism beside the door and stepped out, stealthily making his path through the network of corridors to the entrance. The Jedi Knight held his blade to the throat of Hondo, and the pirate allowed him to go, as he focused upon protecting his base. 
Anakin leapt into the air, landing on top of a Republic gunship, which had been one of many to receive the signal transmitted by Anakin's trustworthy droid R2-D2, and the Council had been quick to send help. The Jedi then elevated himself to a single droid aerial platform, and hitched a ride to the Separatist cruiser, which was descending from the atmosphere. Anakin found that the Force was flowing through him, and all of the droids that dared to cross his path turned into scrap, as he finally saw Dooku. The hooded Sith apprentice guided Anakin to a large room, and he saw Padme, Luke, Leia, and Obi-Wan, all in force fields, suspended and looking lifeless. The Jedi gauged the opponent marching towards him, as Grievous began to lead a group of Magna Guards down one corridor. Anakin reacted instinctively, hurling his lightsaber to the controls of Obi-Wan's chamber, and the Jedi collapsed out onto the floor. Summoning his lightsaber from Grievous' collection, he assisted his apprentice in taking out the troubling Magna Guards, before they realised Dooku and Grievous had elevated themselves onto the upper floor. Dooku applauded the efforts of the Jedi, but he was soon cut off by the sound of a set of eerie footsteps. Palpatine entered from a previously uncovered room, and pretended to be under the capture of his apprentice. But before Anakin could mount a rescue, Obi-Wan held him back as he began to remember what had happened after his capture on the planet of Yabana. The Jedi Master had been brought back to Dooku's personal ship, and he overheard a conversation between the apprentice and Sidious, ordering for the capture of everyone close to Anakin, also realising that this was the mysterious Sith Lord that they had been looking for. Anakin looked up at his mentor Palpatine in disbelief, but the kind demeanour the Supreme Chancellor had always equipped had been replaced by darkness that shook the Jedi. Palpatine extended his fingertips at them both, and Obi-Wan yelled at Anakin to roll away before the lightning could strike them, and the Jedi Master cleverly used Grievous to shield the attacks of the Dark Lord of the Sith. Sidious had little use for Grievous now, and saved the energy of the Jedi by obliterating through his creation with his lightsabers. Dooku knew he would suffer the same fate, and scampered out of the room, heading to an even higher level to evade the fury of his master, observing the Jedi trying to defeat him. Sidious lunged at Obi-Wan, with all the power that the dark side held, and the Jedi master still felt the effect of his time in containment, struggling to the floor. The Sith Lord proclaimed to Anakin that this power would be able to protect Padme and her children for eternity, but Obi-Wan accused him of lies. The Jedi had to choose his path, and he picked up a fallen Electro Staff, then threw it to the combatants, striking Palpatine. The Supreme Chancellor was left stunned, and arrested by incoming Republic clone troopers, but from above, Dooku floated to the Jedi. The Separatist leader was about to land on the floor to duel them both, when he is force pushed by Grandmaster Yoda, and then also collected by the Republic clone troopers. Anakin quickly goes to free Padme, Luke and Leia, as well as receiving his own transmission from Captain Rex, asking for his presence aboard a Republic cruiser. Keeping an eye on the condition of those he had rescued, he and Obi-Wan are shocked to see his old Padawan Ahsoka Tano, requesting their help in dealing with the renegade Sith Maul on the planet of Mandalore. As the Sith have been defeated, Anakin goes to the Outer Rim planet with the 501st Legion, whilst his master sorted out the political matter of a captured Chancellor, as well as Anakin's trial. The Jedi Master is adamant that Anakin's love for Padme and her children had swayed Anakin to the path of the light, but in the end, it is the testimony of Dooku which helped not only preserve Anakin's status as a Jedi, but promoted him to the rank of Master. As Anakin continued his journey on the cruiser, he looked to Padme and his children and felt that at last he was at peace. That is it for what if Luke and Leia were born prematurely. If you enjoyed this what if, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel for more tips, as well as on my other channel what if films. And as always, leave a comment on my what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.